I understand that uh, the project had something to say about that. Yeah, well, I actually made a speech in, in Parliament which the project cut and asked the kids about comments. And my whole point was that the kids are being lied to, they're not being told the truth. Mm. So maybe we could go to one of those quick grabs. People are dying, the world is frying. But today the movement became cross-generational. Business leaders and their staff walking off the job too. These old blokes in suits though, well, they weren't really listening. We've got a whole lot of absolutely irresponsible activists right now. You are being used and manipulated and everything you are told is a lie. Don't be a sheep, think for yourself. Luckily, they are thinking for themselves. The facts are, there is no link between climate change and drought. That's just not true at all. I don't know how they get these facts. See, you could see there that actually what I was saying, that there is no link between drought and climate change. Now, that's not my words. I'm not a climate expert. I listen to the experts. Yep. They are the exact words used by one of our most a senior climate change scientist, Professor Andy Pittman AO. And I think we've got a grab of, of Andy exactly Pittman here that said. we can listen to. Let's have a listen to that. And this may not be what you expect to hear, but as far as the climate scientists know, there is no link between climate change and drought. Now, that may not be what you read in the newspapers and sometimes hear commented, but there is no reason a priori why climate change should make the landscape more arid. Now, what you heard there were the exact words of Andy Pittman, and yet you've got the project show allowing kids to come on saying, oh, no, this is completely untrue, this is not true. You think if they were honest and they were doing the right thing by the kids, they would actually play that grab and tell these kids the truth. You don't underestimate those that protest for uh, stopping climate change and global warming. We should not underestimate what little research they've done into the uh, issue. Because I remember Alan Jones asking uh, Tanya Plebiscite how much CO2 mm. was in the air. And she had no idea. And then she sort of Im implied that there was a lot, like half or something. There's 3%. 3%. She had no idea. So do not overestimate how smart these people are, including those on the project, including the school kids, their teachers, and people on the other side of politics. But these climate, climate activists have infiltrated all the media, and we have in this case a, a program that does influence young people yes. so mm -hmm. strongly. It's so concerning. And they don't have the balance of another perspective. Mm. They just bring it out as though it's all correct and shouldn't be questioned, and it's terrifying. Well, it, it, gets, it gets better. Because then I went on in my speech in Parliament to talk about the polar bears. We might have that grab up there as well. Bears are increasing in number. That's false. We know that they're lying. Ice is melting in the Atlantic and Antarctic and the polar bears and wildlife down there is dying. Now just remember what that young girl said. She said the polar bears down there in the Antarctic are dying. Don't these kids know there's no polar bears in the Antarctic? <laughs> And, and you would have thought someone from the project show would say, yeah, we can't put that to air, but they let it go to air. This is how ill-informed our kids are. Yeah. Now, firstly, even in, in the Arctic, if you look at the science, Professor Susan Crockford, one of the most senior experts in polar bears in the world, has said there's been an increase in polar bears over the last several decades. And in the Antarctic, there's actually been an increase in sea ice over the last 40 years. The trend is up, not down. So you've got these kids hopelessly, hopelessly ill-informed. And the real danger is that they actually think that they are 100% correct. Mm. Because no one has told them anything else in the schools and they're not getting both sides of the story. I think there was a, there was a third bit, I think, of yeah, this, of this let's, here. Let's get to play the third bit and we'll see how we go here. Each generation is safer from extreme weather than at any time in human history. No, no, that is absolutely false. I think they just refuse to believe in the facts. Here the kids, they refuse to believe in mm. the facts. Now, those facts about kids being safer today, they come from the United Nations sponsored database of international disasters, which actually record the number of deaths. We've gone from around, from the 1930s, we had around 400,000 deaths per year, down to about 250,000 deaths in the 1950s, down to around 100,000 in the early 1970s. Since this century, it's been down to about 30,000. And last year, we had the lowest number of deaths ever recorded from extreme weather events.